Hello everyone, we are the students of Vidya Lanka Institute of Technology, currently doing a Master of Engineering under Electronics and Telecommunication. Our topic for today is TCP over ad hoc networks, which belongs to the subject wireless ad hoc and sensor networks. This subject is done under the guidance of Professor Dr. Saurabh Mehta and will be presented by our students Surekha, Devashri and Hannan. So the topics that will be covered under this video are what is network congestion and what is congestion window. Moving on, we will see what and how the TCP congestion control works. We will see TCP Tahoe and TCP Reno, which gives a brief idea about a basic understanding and working of the congestion control. Then we will be comparing the two to see how the two are different from each other. So let us see what is network congestion and what is the significance of congestion window? Basically, network congestion is nothing but the reduced quality of service that occurs when a network or node link is carrying more data that it can handle. Okay, the typical effects include queuing delay, packet loss, or the blocking of new connections. And what is congestion window? Well, it is nothing but a TCP state variable that limits the amount of data the TCP can send into the network before receiving an acknowledgement. The amount of data that can be transferred through a TCP connection is dependent on the congestion window, which is actually maintained by the source. Okay, so let us start with one of the most important technique and get to know how TCP congestion control works. Initially, there is a slow start phase. In the slow start phase, you can see that the congestion window size is initially one. In the next time instant, it doubles and it goes on increasing exponentially, doubling at each instant till it reaches a point, say 32. Here, let's suppose a congestion has been detected. What will happen next is a back off algorithm will be in place. Back off algorithm is nothing but a mechanism where when congestion is detected in slow start phase, it will go back again to its initial congestion window size, which was one. Note that the congestion window here was 32 when the congestion was detected. From here onwards, slow start phase will start again. It will go on increasing exponentially until the congestion window size of 16 is reached. This 16 is actually half of 32, which where the congestion was detected. Then this threshold will be set and from here onwards, something known as congestion avoidance will happen. Congestion avoidance basically is a linear increase in the congestion window size unlike slow start which is then exponential increase. Suppose there was a congestion ahead detected over here again. So in this case the fast instance transmit and the fast recovery will happen. In this case due to the congestion detected there will be a decrease and s again there will be an increase instead of going to slow start phase again it will go do a fast instrument and fast recovery and here onwards suppose a congestion detected again then what will happen it will decrease again to a lower value and the threshold will be set the threshold is basically 10 here while this was 20 like before in this condition where the congestion was detected the threshold was set to half in this case too when the congestion was detected at 20 the threshold will be set to half which is 10 from here onwards condition avoidance like before will have be happening and this is how we will be seeing a simple example of how TCP Tahoe helps in condition control mechanism and how it have helped in ad hoc network. Suppose there is a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter initially the condition window size was 1 for the transmitter. It sends a packet say 0 and receives an acknowledgement for the same from the receiver. Then, when the acknowledgement received, the congestion window size is double. And this time, it will become two. So, two packets can be sent this time, and the acknowledgement for the same will be received. When the acknowledgement for the both of them will be received, the congestion window size will be double again, which in this case will be four. Then again, four packets can be sent easily. Acknowledgement will be received, and the congestion window will become eight. 8 packets will be sent. Let's say here packet 14 was lost. So let us see how we will proceed, how TCP Tahoe will handle this case. The condition have been occurred. Now the 
acknowledgement from the previous packet will be coming. The congestion window size will be 15 because here only 7 to 13 packets have been received and 14 has been lost. So as soon as the acknowledgement for the previous packet will be coming, new packets 15, 16 to 28 will be sent. Suppose 26 and 28 has been lost here as well. Next, the acknowledgement for this new packets will be saying that, okay, we have received the 15 packet, but we are requesting for you to send the 14 packet. Why are they doing this? Is the reason because the 14 packet has been lost and they all want and they all are saying the same thing. Yes, we have received the 16, but we want the 14. Yes, we have received the 27 packet, but we want the 14, 14 packet as well. They will go on saying that in the acknowledgement. So what will happen? In TCP Tahoe, a timeout will be happen because it has not received the 14 packet yet. A timeout for the 14 packet will happen and the 14 packet will be retransmitted again. Here, due to the timeout, the congestion window size will be again reduced to 1 and the threshold will be set to 7. Why 7? Because the congestion window size here was 8, but only 7 packet was received. The 8 one was, was lost. Since one packet was lost, we will do 8 minus 1, which is 7, which will be the threshold value. Moving on, the acknowledge the packet 14 was sent here. The, so the acknowledgement for the 14 packet will be received over here. What will this demand? See, it will say, okay, I have received the packet 14, but the 26 has been lost, so I need that. Okay. So the condition window size will increase by one because one packet has been increased, like in this case, the acknowledgement for the packet has been increased, so the condition window size will be double again. So two packets can be sent now, 26 and 27. You can see here, 27 and 27. It shows that the 22nd packet has been sent twice. So in this case, when the acknowledgement for 26 and 27 will be coming, only the 26 will be considered to increase the congestion window size by one, since 27 was just a repeat packet. Again, since the congestion window size was th three now, 28, 29, 30 can be sent easily, for which the acknowledgement will be received. Now, all they will be saying is, since the, uh, the acknowledgement was successfully received, the condition window size is double again from 3 to 6 and so on the further packets can be sent. Now the problem over here is, we see that the condition window size over here is 6, next time it should double because all the acknowledgement has been received. But we see that the threshold which was set before is 7, so instead of increasing to 14, it will limit itself to 7 because the condition and threshold was set to 7 before. So only seven packets will be sent again. From here onwards, congestion avoidance will be happening, which will be congestion window size plus one upon congestion window size and so on. The linear increase in the congestion window size will occur and it will be seen that the congestion no more occurs again. Okay, so we will be seeing how TCP Reno is different from TCP Tahoe. In the same as the previous case, the condition window size was initially one. The packet was sent and acknowledgement was received and the condition window size will goes on increasing exponentially. This was a slow slash pace. Here, let us consider the 14 packet was lost as well. So what is going to happen is the acknowledgement for seven, eight, nine, ten will be received, which will increase the condition window size to 15 which will allow for more packets to be sent. In this case, let us consider the 26 and 28 packet to be lost as well. What will happen next? It is quite simple. 15, 16 and all the packet which has been received will be sending an acknowledgement. It will be saying that, okay, we have received the packet 15, but we are demanding for 14 because we have lost it. Similarly, 16, 17 and the rest of the packets will be demanding for 14. When the three acknowledgements have been received continuously, or three duplicate ACK have been received, what will happen is it will directly send a 14 packet without waiting for a timeout. This is known as the fast retransmit phase. Here onwards, it will enter the fast recovery phase. Here, the threshold will be seven as in the previous case, and the condition will be window size will be threshold plus the three acknowledgement, which is seven plus three equal to 10 then what will happen the 18 
package which has been received will send an acknowledgement okay 18 has been received we want 14 again but because it does not know that 14 has been sent again here the congestion window size will increase by one and so on until the 23 have been standing started demanding the 14 packet here the packet will move forward from 29 30 31 and 32 and so on by the and they, it has received the 32 packet the congestion window size will be 19 here what will happen is 26 has been lost and 28 has been lost so 29 will be asked 14 will be asking that okay I have received 14 but I am demanding for 26 when this happens the fast recovery will exit and the congestion window size will be 7 which was equal to the threshold the new packets which have been sent 29 30 31 will all be demanding for the packet 29 26 which has been lost you see again the acknowledgement the three duplicate ACK has been received so the fast retransmit phase will occur again and the 26 will be retransmitted your threshold here will be 3 and the congestion window size will be 3 plus 3 acknowledgement which is 6 next 32 will also be sending the congestion window size increasing the congestion window size to 7 here onwards when the acknowledgement for 26 will be received it will be demanding for 28 here as seen before it will exist the fast recovery phase with the congestion window size of 3 which was the threshold before here sender will be stored and the clock will be lost what because the 32 have already been received and there are no known package to be sent that is why a timeout will be ha happening for 28 where the congestion window size will be reduced to 1 again and a threshold will be set to 2 the acknowledgement for the same will be received and from here onwards as seen on we can see the main difference between TCP Tahoe and TCP Reno basically they all are same up till this point when the congestion is occurring over here so what TCP Tahoe does is TCP Tahoe basically does a back off and reduces from the slow start moving ahead and then going ahead with the condition avoidance but in this TCP Reno what happens is when the condition is detected it does a back off but only to a certain extent due to the fast retransmit and fast recovery it is able to actually keep its threshold quite high and the condition window quite high allowing for faster retransmit and faster recovery and then moving on to congestion avoidance so that's it guys thank you for watching this were the references we have taken for the video